Okay, so what I'd like to do is just introduce Betty. I know most of you have heard of her or have met her before at my other seminars. And the last time she came, so she's come twice so far, the last time she came a lot of you guys said, well, we really want to know in more depth what she eats specifically. Because she was talking about her experiences and changing your paradigm and what to eat and how she went about it. But a lot of you said, well, what exactly does she eat? How, who do I, how can I put that together? So that's why we set the agenda the way we did today. And Betty has been running for what, 30, 30 some years? 40. 40 years. <laughs> <laughs> Family's a trap. 40 years. And just recently she set a record where she did 89 miles in 48 hours. Whoa. The, so the USA track and field has that documented, that she is the record holder between 70 and 74 age group. And she did that without sleeping and no hallucinations, as I, as I heard the questions earlier. And this past, and last year, she did a 100-mile run in 72 hours where she didn't sleep. Wow. So all natural foods, no, no, no sleeping. No drugs, right? No promise, drugs. no drugs. <laughs> <laughs> promise, no drugs. So um, she's going to talk about what to eat. The seminar was what to eat, what not to eat. We're going to focus mostly on what to eat. And I was asking her earlier, I said, if Giant Foods said to you, Betty, you can come in today and you can just buy whatever you want for free. You don't even have, we'll pay for it for you. I said, out of all the things they sell at Giant Food, all the, all the food items, what percentage of those would you take for free? Zero. Oh. I'm sorry, no Cokes. I would take all of it. You take all of it? Yeah. No. All right, Bobby, good. And that's, that is the real truth. Because I, know, I live in Montgomery County, and the Giants, or the non-organic food stores in my area don't really have organic food. And the organic food that I've seen in like a Giant or a Safeway, um, they are not very fresh looking because people just don't buy them. So it's actually zero. For food, now water I might buy. Mm -hmm. uh, I would buy distilled water if they had it, and I stopped drinking spring water, and I went into um, the water that is processed through, uh, because that's what I can get, and I have to have water. But I use distilled water to cook all of my food in distilled water, so I would buy distilled mm -hmm. water. Let's make it come up front. <laughs> well, we want to have you on the camera. Okay. Well, don't forget they sell gift cards too to like Southwest Airlines. <laughs> no, I said the food items. <laughs> <laughs> the food items. <laughs> and that is the honest to goodness truth. But I didn't, I didn't um, start out that way, this way. I'm now 72 years old. And when I was, let's say, 29 or 30, I was like this, and I was junk food. <laughs> Lots of junk food. There was a, you're probably too young to remember this advertisement, but there was an advertisement with Lay's potato chips that said, I bet you just can't eat one. That was the advertisement. And for me, I changed it to, I bet you can't just eat one bag. Because <laughs> that's where I was. I was eating junk and not really no, and this is 1969, 1970, early 70s. Not very much information was available about nutrition and disease. Not at all. The doctors weren't into it. There were lots of really cool sounding diets, and some of them you might know, grapefruit diet. Somebody, how about the eat half of what you normally eat diet. <laughs> <laughs> that would still be you too know, much. And <laughs> all kinds of really cool sounding diets. Nothing, nothing really worked. So I tried them all. It took me like 10 years 
you know, I, I was 200 plus pounds, and I was uh, not very much of a TV person, but I was a reader. I would read books, and I would sit there with my potato chips, you know, <laughs> turn the page, grease all over the page, and, you know, and do that. And I was just like everybody else, and I decided that I needed to be around for my daughter, who was three years old, and I wanted to be around to help her to grow up and, you know, have grandchildren for me and the whole nine yards. And I decided that I needed to do something, but there wasn't anything out there to help me. Nowadays, there are lots of things out there to help people, and medical science is really into taking a look at researching about nutrition and the impact it has, not only on your health, fitness, and nutrition, but also on aging. So I'm now today 72 years old, and as Stephanie says, I'm an ultra runner, and it has um, taken step by step on the path to get to where I am today. Uh, super duper healthy. Uh, I don't have any any issues at all with my health at all. Um, the resting heart rate is 28 beats a minute in the morning, which is, you know, a strong heart that's as strong as some of the the uh, world class kind of athletes. And my blood pressure. I did a five, I, I run by the watch rather than by the miles. I did a five hour run one day at a track, real, basically without stopping. Of course, I had water and then food that I ate, and I'll talk to you about what I eat when I run. I came home and took my blood pressure, and it was 87 over 47, which is very, 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 very low for people who are not in good, good, healthy shape. But my cardiologist is aware of this, and he tells me if you feel dizzy or lightheaded, then it's too low. So I always can check, and I always monitor my blood pressure. Um, just routinely, daily, I, I monitor it several times a day. Because of my running and the way I eat, I'm gonna make sure that my blood pressure is where it should be. So, I took the steps from the Lay's potato chips, sitting on the sofa with the books, to where I am now. And one of the major parts was the nutrition. I fell in love with running. Find a passion. You have to have some kind of aerobic exercise. Walking is great. I do a lot of walking. I do Tai Chi and I do Zen yoga and I do uh, running. But my main thing is running. So find something that you're passionate about and structure your life around it. For me, it was running. But some other people I know, sitting here with the black t shirt on, <laughs> it's also running. And if you can focus on the passion of running the way I did back when, I found out that everything that I was doing when I was not running, whether I was eating or sleeping or doing whatever, was done to support the running. So let's talk a little bit about the food. Okay, and stop me at any point if you have any questions because I became a vegan. I eat fruits and vegetables and whole grains and beans and seeds and nuts. So if it's not a fruit, and you don't have to take notes because you have it somewhere in this handout. Okay, everything I'm gonna say is in this handout. Okay, fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, seeds, and nuts. And I started way back when because I ran into a radio show with a local doctor who was a practicing physician who was reaching out to the community because medical science didn't do this. And I listened to him. 
And way back when, 40 years ago, he was saying, the best thing to do is eat fruits and vegetables and whole grains and beans and seeds and nuts. And if you're really smart, you would eat beans every day. Okay, I listened to him, I trusted him, and that's what I did. Gradually, it took me a while to get rid of the potato chips. Okay? Oh, I'm agreeing. Your potato chips. <laughs> oh, okay. So you know what I'm talking about. Because it was, they were salty and they were fresh and they were great. And now I have a relationship with those potato chips that I had with eating her shoe. I don't want to eat your shoe. <laughs> you know, but it took some doing. The passion for running, and then I found out that I had the capacity from inside of myself to hold on to what I knew I needed to do nutrition-wise to become more healthy. And it's the same passion that I had for running. You have the capacity inside of yourself because I know because you're sitting here. How many learned to ride a bike when you were, how many? Did you get on the bike and ride off into the sunset that first time? Probably not. You probably failed. I had training wheels the first time. <laughs> well, when I came along, training wheels had not been invented. <laughs> But I fell off the bike, and I learned to ride a bike on a rocky road that was not paved. And my oldest sister or brother <coughs> pushed me down the hill. I fell off the bike many, many times I got back on. You've done the same thing. You've had challenges in your life that you have met. <clears throat> Somehow you've met these challenges in your life. And I'm trying to tell you that there are two things that you need in order to stick with what, or begin the process and begin to stick with what we're talking about here. And one thing is internal strength. It took me sticking to it to learn to ride that bike. It took me sticking to it to learn to swim when I was in my early 30s. Okay? And then I learned I was afraid of water, and I learned to swim because I had something inside of myself that drove me to continue with those lessons. And then I went to the high dive. I'm afraid of high places, and I'm up on the high dive diving off because I wanted to learn the high dive. That was another challenge. And then I finished school. That was, you know, all of those papers you had to write, all of the, you know, all the work you had to do. You had something inside of yourself that drove you to do that. Now with Oprah, she tries to get stuff from outside. She can pay for anything in the world she wants. If she has a trainer, she has a dietitian, she has Dr. Oz, she has anything. It's all outside of herself. She doesn't realize that she's got the capacity inside of herself to do whatever she needs to do nutrition-wise to take better care of herself. She hasn't realized that yet. Something from inside helped her to become the person she had become over all of those years and she, you know, I mean, she just did it up. I mean, she ended up being just about the richest woman in the world because of what's inside. So I'm going to ask, would you like to share some challenge you had along the way that you were able to overcome? Anybody? You could be safe and say you learned to ride a bike. But what else did you do? Did you finish college? Did you take the bar exam and did you pass it? Something that's really, really difficult. Me? Switching jobs. Mm -hmm. Switching careers. What kind of career? I was an engineer and I switched to teaching. <clears throat> okay. Quite a challenge. So this over here and over there. And who in the world gave you the capacity? I just made my mind up. 
you made your mind up and you pulled from inside of yourself to do that. Okay, those qualities of success are still in there. You can do whatever you want to do. Your health is probably the most important thing that you have. Without your health, I don't care how much money you have. You can buy, have your family buy a nice casket, <laughs> you know, with the money. But you have the capacity inside to do what you, need, you know you need to do because now you've been educated. Many of you have been part of the boot camp. And you go and you do these things and you know how you feel afterwards. You feel great. And you just have to keep doing it. Pull from inside. Get that strength. Shake it and wake it up because it's lying dormant inside. So that's the internal strength and that's the passion. The passion for doing something like walking or running. Because again, afterwards, you know how you feel. How many did something today, aerobic? Yeah. You feel yeah, great okay. afterwards. <laughs> and the only way is you've got to get out there and do that every day. Because you want to hold on and remember that feeling. So once you get those two things and you have them in your mind and you know that you have the capacity inside and you know that you're going to be passionate about feeling great after every workout, you're ready for this. Because this is going to help your body to do what you need to do when you're out there walking or running or, in, or at the boot camp uh, sessions. I've made it all out for you. <laughs> the name of it is Yuck. And you can read how Yuck came about. And you don't have to do it now, but you can read it later. Believe me, the name is Yuck and Yuck stuck. And it says how, it, how Yuck got its name. And now I look at yuck as if heart disease, diabetes, and cancer came up. I asked those three guys to come up with a name for how I eat. Okay? <laughs> and they came up with yuck. So they're over here and they're telling me we want to name it yuck. <laughs> and then I asked them, well, why would you want to name it yuck? And they say, we want to name it yuck because our job is to invade bodies. And if you have something good that's going to make somebody's body healthier, we need to name it yuck so that they won't even take a look at the package. They can say, oh, yuck, yuck nutrition. We don't even want to have anything to do with that. So they are not going to take a chance on looking at it and reading about yuck. So that's what heart disease, cancer, and diabetes said to me. We want to make sure that we always have bodies that we can invade. So we're going to name it yuck so that people can turn away. OK? And that's exactly what this does. It turns away. It turns away, completely away, lifestyle diseases. It turns away lifestyle diseases. And as you age, gravity is relentless. And the impact of aging on your body is relentless unless you can fight back. This will help you fight back. And if you look on page five, and you can read the verbiage at some point later on, but I wanted to tell you what you have here, all in one place. And this information is all backed by medical science. I don't do anything, I don't have to change anything within my own life without having the background of research. See, I don't do fly-by-night kind of things. I don't do diets. This is a lifestyle change, not a diet. I found out from the grapefruit diet and the eat half of what you normally eat kind of diet and all of those cutesy little diets, that they don't work. You can take the weight off, but you cannot keep it off. Because you cannot 
change your way of eating to another way that you cannot eat like that for the rest of your life. This you can eat for the rest of your life, if you are smart. If you're not smart, <laughs> So this is the true facts. If you're not smart, you aren't going to take it seriously. If you're smart, first column, all the way down, it starts with the vitamins, fat-soluble and water-soluble vitamins. These are not from me. This is from the medical research on nutrition. Okay, the column. It lists them all, all the way down, and then it gets to um, the minerals on page seven. Start with the minimal, minerals on this same column. On page seven, and then it goes to those wonderful antioxidants on page 10. Okay? So you have a list of everything the human body needs every day. You need all of these things every day to be healthy and stay healthy. You don't have to look in 10, 15, 20 different books. Here it is, in that column, first column, everything that you need to put into your body every day. Everything. The second column, and we'll go back to page, we'll go back to that first page with the water. Uh, I'm sorry, the fat solubles on page five. And look across. Not only does it list everything you have to have, I keep saying it, everything you have to eat every day to stay healthy. So that means if you have a Coke for breakfast, oh, somebody raised their hand. <laughs> if you have a Coke for breakfast, you missed so and so many vitamins and minerals. Coffee and donut, you miss so and so many vitamins and minerals. Your body cannot function and stay healthy on a Coke for coffee and donuts for breakfast. You've been on a fast all night long, and we've always known that breakfast is the most important meal of the day. That's right, the most important meal of the day. Okay. So you know about column one. Column two gives you some examples of the kinds of foods that you can select to take care of whatever is in column one. The first one is looking at vitamin A. So if you don't like carrots, what other orange things could you eat to get your vitamin A? You know, you know your colors, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you know your colors. And Mother Nature is really smart. She has really organized them for the most part by colors. And we can do that by colors. So you can look down the second column all the way down and figure out what it is you like to cover whatever is in column one. So if you don't like certain things, you can select other things. You'll see that sun foods are almost in every box in number two, in column number two. Because they are called super kind of foods. Chia seed, for example. It's all over the place. It's one of the best things to ingest when you're doing long distance running. Chia seed is the only non-meat that is complete protein. For my 48-hour race, for my 72-hour race, and for my 48-hour race last year and my 24-hour races, chia seed and water, along with food, the food that I make myself, okay, and take to these races because they have gummy bears, <laughs> bowls full, and potato chips. Ah, potato chips. I don't eat them. And M&Ms, and donuts, and 
get junk. You can't sustain yourself running 24 hours without a break or 48 hours without a break on those kinds of foods. What I did was I made mushrooms and I made um, sauteed onions and garlic and mushrooms and kale. Kale, and I made it into a little patty. And a chia seed also. Made it into a little patty and put it in a little serving kind of glass containers, because I moved away from plastic. Little glass containers that they go crazy when I go through the airport to try to get, to get through the security. You know, and that's what I ate for my braces. Chia seed, you see chia seed in many places here. Find out about chia seed. Ask your doctor about chia seed. Chia seed moderates your blood sugar, moderates your cholesterol, moderates your, um, your blood pressure. It's complete protein. It's filled with calcium. It's antioxidant. It's so many different things in that one little seed. It keeps you hydrated when you're out there. Yes? What is chia seed and how do you eat it? Like, do you put it in smoothies or? Yes. It just, it's you like a supplement it, to other foods. You can bake fruits. it into muffins or bread, mm -hmm. like things like that. You can sprinkle it raw on a salad, put it in a smoothie. If you could do a smoothie in the morning with chia seed and some of these other things that you will see back, because I have recipes in here, you aren't gonna get by without having these recipes in here, then you would do much better, 100% better than when you have that Coke in the morning. Chia seed gives you energy. You gives you energy. Sleep. You know, it gives you energy. 48 hours without sleep, you may not want to do that. But that's what I did, and Chia seed helped me. And, and my other way, my other lifestyle uh, components helped me a lot. Yes? Well, since you've done a lot of research here, I'm sure on chia seeds, yes. there are some foods, once you heat them, they lose properties, nutritional properties. So I was wondering, in, it sounds like some of your recipes, they're warm and some are cold. With the chia seeds, do they keep their nutrition no matter if they're yes. hot or cold? They do. They do. And um, that's a good point to bring up also. Nowadays, the medical science research is asking you to cook most of your food in water rather than grilling it or baking it or broiling it to a high degree. You can bake it, but don't bake it. It's like 400 or less. You know, don't, um, don't um, roast like you roast a pig or something. Don't roast your food to the point where the temperature gets really high. They don't want you to do that because what happens is it, it causes a chemical reaction with the, within the food and then you eat the food and then those, I don't know the names of those chemicals, some of them are long like that, um, is, can deposit cancer into your body. So they're finding that the temperature at which you prepare your food should be lower. And they're asking you never to fry. No more fried chicken. You know, they're asking you that. That's not me. That's medical, the medical research. It's a lot of research out there. Yes? On page six in the second What page are you on? Page six. Page six, okay. For example, by raw mushrooms and vitamin B products and supplements. Where are you? Uh, B, uh, vitamin B6? In the second column, it says supplements. Vitamin B6. Yes. You say raw mushrooms and supplements? 
Yeah, it says like you oh, need to take right, that. right, because yeah, like, because like what I've done here, this was really sneaky, <laughs> but I did it. I did it because I wanted to be sneaky, and I figured someone would figure it out and ask me. I left out all animal-based foods from this chart. And I'm sure that there are some animal-based foods that have vitamin B2. But for me, I'm not going animal. And I do know that the United States of America is not going to stand up there and tell its people to stop eating meat and stop buying meat. They aren't going to do that because it's going to put a complete hole in the economy. Because just think, think. If everybody stopped buying meat and eating meat, what about the farmers? Okay, what about, what about the drug companies? Okay, meat causes cancer. Red meat in the lab, in the research, causes cancer. There's a relationship between colon cancer and red meat. That's been proven in the research in the lab. If everybody stops eating meat, what about the drug companies that make all of the chemotherapy and all of the drugs? They go out of business, right? The farmers who grow the, the red meat, they go out of business. And the restaurants. Like and the restaurants. And so it would put a complete hole in the economy. And I don't think the USA is ready to do that. Okay, so that's why you see raw mushrooms, and for B2, I eat a lot of raw mushrooms because I know it has B2. I put it in my salad. I don't have a salad unless I have raw mushrooms, unless I can't get them somewhere. And everything I do is organic, and there's a supplement that you can take in the regular multivitamin that has B2 in it. So that's why I have supplement there. But I didn't put any of the red meat sources there because at the front it says, after the fact, it says plant-based. So you aren't going to see any meat in here. And there's a reason. You're healthier without the meat. And I'm talking all animal-based products. Seafood, and I'm talking poultry, and lamb, and pork and beef. I know, I know, it's hard. But for me, I made the decision that I wanted to be around and have, oh. That's okay, I'll just hold it. <laughs> I wanted to be around and have a healthy life for the rest of the time that I have on this planet, which I have no clue, thank goodness. But I know it's really, really hard, but I believe that everybody should listen to this. I'm not saying go out and throw away all of your steaks and hamburger and all of that all at one time. It would be nice if you did. Or throw away all of your Cokes and whatever. It would be nice. Your body would love it if you did. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is this is the latest of the latest, of the latest research about nutrition and health. Okay. Okay, it took me years. It did. It took me years. For one thing, all of the research that's here wasn't available to me back then. It could have been in the medical journals that I did not have access to. But it took me years. I had no doctor tell me that you're in trouble and you better stop doing whatever. I was over 200 pounds, and I knew how I was feeling. I felt horrible. I couldn't breathe, much less catch a three-year-old. I could hardly breathe, you know? And I just decided that I was going to make some changes, and I didn't put pressure on myself. But I will tell you who, where the pressure came from family members and friends. You mean to tell me you're going to sit at this table in Paris running this marathon and pull your can of chickpeas out of, the, out of your suitcase 
And, and here in Paris, we were there to run a marathon in Paris and another one in London the next week. And I took all suitcase full of little chickpeas because I needed protein and I could always get a salad. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I went to the marathon in, um, in Moscow in 1989 when I had just gotten myself into marathon running. It was my second marathon. The only food that I could eat was boiled potatoes and sliced tomatoes, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I was in Moscow for a whole week. And by the time we went to, it was Leningrad back then, then they had fresh salads, so I could eat a salad. And I didn't know enough, as I said, I, it was early on to take my chickpeas. But I had, that's what I ate. I lost like 10 pounds as I ran that marathon, you know, and I was much younger, so I was able to do it. I, I don't think I could do a marathon on boiled potatoes and sliced tomatoes, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Okay, they had other food there. They had lots of uh, red meat based foods. I wasn't, didn't do it. Couldn't do it, you know. So I took baby steps. I kept learning what I needed to do, and I took baby steps. And I didn't beat myself up when I fell off the wagon and went and got the bag of potato chips or two. But I got back on, you know, just like everybody else. This was very difficult. I, 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 I know how difficult it was because I did it, and it took a while. And you can do it too, because it has impact for the rest of your life. You do not want high blood pressure, because every time you eat something and you're on medication, you need to help the medication out. So you don't want your blood pressure to go up, because every time it goes up, your arteries are damaged a little tiny bit. But you get a whole bunch of little tiny bits, and you have problems inside your arteries. And the arteries, if they can't work, cannot give you life throughout your body by blood, pumping the blood throughout your body. You know, so every little thing that you make, every little change that you make, something goes on inside of your body that's good. You can't get around it. You can't get away from it. So get yourself, get yourself on a track where you take little tiny, teeny, weeny, weeny, weeny little baby steps. If you eat something that you know you shouldn't eat, take little tiny, little weeny, weeny little baby steps away from it. And eventually, it'll be out of your life. Don't try to do all of this overnight. I didn't do it overnight. It took me a long time. I told you I worked with those diets for 10 years before I finally found Dr. Merkin with the information that was really going to help me. And then once I got his information, I put it in here. But that's what happens. You put it in here first. And, every, and I was smoking. Every time I would light up a cigarette, I would think about what he had said about smoking and what it does to your body to the point where I got to the point where I didn't light up a cigarette any longer. And I didn't eat those potato chips or that German chocolate cake that I loved any longer. But it wasn't overnight. Well, I yes. have a question for you. And obviously you went through this transformation. You had family. You had at least what, one, one daughter. daughter? We had one daughter. And, and a husband who was a red meat potato kind and of guy. And grandchildren. So I'm kind of wondering how you transferred your lifestyle to the younger generations and whether or not they accepted some of it. Uh, my two little grandchildren were born to a, to a daughter who got married at 37 and had the first one at 40 and the second one at 41. And I had a, an early childhood consulting business that I took and put way over there. 
because I'm already in the field with infants and toddlers and preschoolers and uh, education and development. So when they were born, they became mine. <laughs> they don't think so, but they became <laughs> mine. I kept them. They were never in daycare. So from the moment they were born, my daughter was unable to breastfeed. As soon as they were ready to eat food, you know, solid food, no baby, no baby food. I'm cooking my broccoli and the spinach and whatever else they needed and straining it. So they have been vegans, organic, at my house from the very beginning. They don't know anything differently. This is their way of life. How old are they now? They're eight and seven. They're eight and seven. So this is all they know at my house. Now, when they're at home with their mother and father, it has nothing to do with what they do at my house because they do what I do. They eat what I eat. And I'm very fortunate they live 10 minutes away. And I have dinner with them every day. And I've had, as they were growing up, I've had breakfast, lunch, dinner, or breakfast, and, you know, meals with them every day. They eat oatmeal made in, in distilled water. And kids don't like things mixed up, so they have a banana and grapes or strawberries or whatever on the side. They eat oatmeal without sugar. They don't know about sugar, except in fruit, in my house. Now when the youngest one was in preschool, they went to preschool half a day, and I came there one day, and out on the uh, outside bulletin board was the teacher wrote, favorite snacks, and she had all the kids listed. And Dakota, broccoli! <laughs> broccoli was his favorite snack. Because that's what he gets in my house. He gets raw broccoli, and he gets cooked broccoli, and he gets raw spinach, and he gets cooked spinach, and you know. So that's how I did it, and that's how we would make the change. You can't let children have access to junk, and then later on, when they're six or eight or 10 or 12, trying to take it away. Doesn't work. Doesn't work with us, it won't work with kids. So at my house, they know there's no pizza, there's no ice cream, there's no junk. And they know I don't eat junk. Man, if I should come in with an ice cream cone, they would, it would just kill them. Just about <laughs> because they know that I have, and we talk about it, we talk about vitamins and minerals and what impact it has. They know that the carrot, when I cut it, you know, just slice it like that, it looks like the pupil of an eye. So carrots are good for the eyes. Mother Nature did that. Carrots are good for the eye because it looks like a carrot. They know sweet potatoes are good for the pancreas and they know what the pancreas is there for. One day they asked me, my Lee, they called me my Lee. My Lee, where does boo boo come from? <laughs> you know, where does boo boo come from? So I tried to explain to them where boo boo comes from, and I went out and got these little elementary kind of uh, anatomy books. So it has all, you know, all the, the insides. And we studied the insides of the body. And they know what's good for bones. And they'll say, kale is good for bones. Or they'll say, broccoli is good for bones. They both have calcium for the bones. They know about vitamin D. Now, we have darker skin. So we can't make vitamin D from the sun as easily as lighter skin. So they know about that. You know, so that's where you begin with the younger generations. It has to start way like that. To give them, this is the way of life from the very beginning. So that's, that's where you start with them. And for me, 
I had to be strong because my family and my friends didn't like this. My mother. Thanksgiving, I took my own food. And everybody else had all of the fixing, you know. And my mother was the one who would bring everybody together. And I didn't want to hurt her feelings. But I had to. And she finally understood. She finally understood. She didn't make the change herself, and she ended up in her 80s having a series of strokes from high blood pressure because she didn't do what she should have been doing with her medication and with her diet. So, you know, but your friends will knock it, your family will knock it. I ended up telling my husband, eyeball to eyeball, I refuse to contribute to your ill health. <laughs> he had a hard time with that, but I was relentless because I knew I was right. I was reading all of this stuff and then trying to make changes. Now my daughter, when she was six years old, she became a vegetarian along with her mother. And she's not had, I know, no red meat since she was six and she's 47 now. You know, so I didn't, I don't remember, I'm sure I brainwashed her, but I don't remember, <laughs> you know, I don't remember standing over there, over her like this. But uh, she was in the environment and it was a lot of uh, discussions about food and what I was not going to buy at the grocery store any longer. So finally, uh, my husband came around sort of. When he needed whatever, he would go to his mother's house and she would fry chicken or whatever. You know, that's okay, but I wasn't going to buy it. I wasn't going to cook it. If he wanted to buy it and cook it, he had to buy his own dishes and he had to buy his own pots and pans. Okay? That was just the way it was. And that's how relentless I was. Once I knew I was on the right track, so, back to this chart, the third column tells you what your body is getting from whatever is in the first column. It needs what's in the first column, as I said, that first column every day you need to make sure that your body gets exactly what it needs. Okay, now the last column, it's for you. And I'm going to flip your way over to the recipe on page 13. And the recipe, ooh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Right? <laughs> it's no, I, recipe, no, it's fine. It's, okay. it's a recipe that is a baseline recipe. This takes an awful lot of time the way I do it. There are shortcuts that I'm not willing to make that you may be willing to make. Like I have to have organic and I have to have fresh. You may not need to have organic right now. It's up to you. But there is a little paragraph somewhere in this paper toward the end that talks about organic and uh, um, organic, why, why you should do organic because it has implications for cancer, the pesticides, are related to certain cancers in your body. And that is the latest, and it's June 2013. So I got it from a publication that's dated June 2013, and you know, this is not June yet. Okay, but I do organic, and I do fresh. So I don't do canned anything, I have fresh everything. And as I said, you can do what you need to do. If you do can, rinse them, get the salt off, you know, beans. I do a lot of beans. My boys love this yuck. They eat this yuck, vegetable soup kind of yuck, and they love it. So what I do is, what I've done here is I've given you the baseline. You will look back at those uh, charts and you will see 
that leafy greens are all through sprinkled all the way through. So this one has a baseline of, of uh, leafy greens. It has beans sprinkled all the way through. It has a baseline of beans <coughs> and garlic and onions and olive oil. And we are talking, we're talking the first cold pressed olive oil because that has the most flavor and it's the most pure for olive oil and it's the most expensive, especially if you get organic. But as I said, you, you have choices. So if you look down at the recipes on page 13, you will see the baseline. So every day you would have these kinds of foods as your baseline. And then over on page 15, it gives you the option of adding what other veg veggies you would like. And what you can do is go back to that chart, the last column, where you're going to make your, um, your uh, shopping list. That's where you would plug in whatever else you love to cook, to eat. I have a friend whose husband, well, you read this, it's, she made it. I gave her a sample of soup, and you see at the, at the very last page, the next to the last page, it says that you can cook this as a soup on page 16. You can make it as a soup, a stew, or a loaf. Okay? So you can have a variety. In the wintertime, the soups are great. Um, the vegetable and bean stew is very hearty and very good. But the whole thing is very hearty. All three of them. And then you can make it into a loaf, sort of like um, the veggie burgers you see in the stores. So you can make it, you can serve it however you need to. And it tells you how to do that. So, for me, it's all organic and it's all, um, the baseline is always there. There's always chia seed in the baseline and brown rice in the baseline. And it's good to get your brown rice away from California and America because of the, uh, not pesticides, but it's uh, Genetically modified? Yes. Um, get your brown rice from Argentina or China. It's USDA uh, certified organic, Argentina or China. You will see that on the package of the rice. Especially for young children, you don't want them to have this rice that's now filled with junk. Okay. So that's what I that's what I do. That's how I eat. The breakfast is a little different, and it has. Oatmeal and oat bran, and you'll see that back on page uh, 13 for the breakfast. And you can do this breakfast, and I do it in batches where I can uh, freeze part of it. So every morning, what I do is I make big batches, and now I'm giving it to people, my sister, and you know, it takes a lot to do this, and a lot of time, and a lot of effort, but I have meals that I don't have to cook at all, just, and I don't use the microwave, so I bring it out and put it in the oven or, or just let it thaw if it's the morning, the breakfast one. And um, I don't have to bother with cooking for one week or two weeks or three weeks, depending on how much of a batch. So it's easy for me to grab it and if I'm going away for lunch or something, you know, it's easy. But it does take a lot of effort and a lot of work. Um, my friend, I started to tell you, the one who named it Yuck, and you can see by his story when you read it, that he was out of shape and he was heading, when he was into some of the lifestyle diseases, and now he's, he's up over 20 miles a week walking. He's lost a third of his weight, body weight, and he's no longer diabetic or pre-diabetic, and his blood pressure went down. And he used the yuck to help him to make changes otherwise. So he likes really hot food. So his wife, as these uh, jalapeno peppers and really, really hot. So she puts 
his sort of personality into the food by giving him stuff that he he likes. And uh, he's begging for it when they run out. And she keeps it in the freezer and serving sizes. And he's actually begging for it when they run out. Yes? Where do you get our organic food from? There are many, many organic food markets all around. Now, I know Montgomery County and Brockville, that's where I live. But um, don't you have roots out here somewhere? Mm -hmm. Roots yeah. and Whole Foods? Yeah. No. And I know we have Moms. one called Mom's. I think Mom's is out this way somewhere. Mm -hmm. My it's organic David's market, Mom's. Market. And uh, as I said earlier, some of the conventional food stores like Safeway and Giant, they have sections of organic, but you need to be careful because it's not as popular, so it's not as fresh. And you see the broccoli's got little brown things. What about like Trader Joe's? I understand. Uh, they may have. Uh, I never go to Trader Joe's, uh -huh. but I know there's one in Rockville, and and I don't I know. I understand they, they carry a lot of organic. They they products. have organic. No, no, no. Not all of it, but some of it. Some of it. Um, there's a big um, uproar about Monsanto right now. Um, you know, it's the like chemical the, the latest cause du jour, or whatever you want to call it. Um, could you talk a little bit about that, why there, people are so upset about Monsanto? Which you mean because of the junk they, they are doing? Yeah, it's like junk. Junk. Pesti <laughs> it's, it's like they've engineered food that's pesticide resistant, so mm -hmm. they can put more pesticides wow. on it. And, um, and then it winds up in the food chain, right? What, what I have gleaned from all of the reading of all of the years about nutrition, the closest to nature is the best. So I don't want anything that's engineered or anything. And, and you can see on the internet, you can go on they call it, I think, the dirty dozen. The foods, strawberries, are at the top. They have the most pesticides. Onions are at the bottom. They have the least pesticides. If you buy just uh, conventional foods, because bugs love sweet. So anything that's sweet and easy. Strawberries are very delicate. It's easy for a bug just to get in there and just have a ball. They don't like onions. So they put less pesticides on onions than they do on, on strawberries and on apples. Things that are easy for bugs to get into have the most pesticides. Things that have, like a banana has a, a covering, um, I think corn is another one that has covering. They have to work a little harder to get in there. They are have less pesticides. And as I said, back here on one of these pages, there's a box at the top of the page that talks about it. the latest buzz on buying and eating organic, June 6, 2013. I quoted them verbatim. What it is that you need to know about pesticides and nutrition. There's an awful lot of cancer going around for a lot of different reasons. Most of the lifestyle diseases can be pushed aside just by eating a certain way. For the most part, high blood pressure is a lifestyle disease. So I'm not knowingly going to put something in my mouth that's going to give me the possibility of getting high blood pressure or cancer or heart problems or diabetes. I'm just not going to do it because now I know. You know? So the almighty drug companies, and the pesticide companies, they're making money because people don't take this to heart. They don't across the entire United States. I just heard a, 
report today that said here in the United States there are more obese and overweight people than there are not. So we're now the majority of the people, adults, in the United States. In Children's Hospital, National Medical Center in D.C. is in the middle of building a wing to handle type 2 diabetes in young children. We didn't have that problem a long time ago. It was an old age disease. Now, young kids. There's a reason. There's a reason. And believe me, McDonald's does not care. And when I say McDonald's, I mean all of those guys out there that will push these kind of foods at you and advertise, spend billions of dollars getting you to buy that Big Mac. They don't care. Whether your children get diabetes or not, they don't care. Whether you get a stroke or not, they don't care. It's the almighty dollar. Yeah. Okay, I have two questions. Um, I think I have like four, but I don't know if we don't have much time. So, um, I know, I talk too much. No, it's really good. <laughs> How many of you have heard of the nine hybrid foods? Nine. Hybrid. Like vegetables that are created by like, like broccoli or those that aren't from the, the original state. Oh, you mean they've uh, tampered with them happen. in some way or another? I try to stay away from anything that's not natural, a part of what was here on this earth. Yeah. Yeah. Because um, for one thing, I don't know what they've done to make it whatever. You know. And they could have put chemicals in it or grown it in such a way that's not healthy for the body. Yeah, so I try to eat the apple. And I don't do juices, that's another thing. Juices, according to the research, is one of the main reasons for type 2 diabetes here in this country. I don't know about other countries. So like but here, or eat the orange, don't, eat the or don't drink the orange juice, because sugar goes way up. That is pure sugar. Apple juice, way up. And then it drops. And whenever you eat too much sugar, whether it's orange juice or Cokes, <laughs> <laughs> Whenever you eat too much, what happens is the chemical change is this. You drink it, it goes into the digestion process, and it circulates in the blood. So when you go get your blood tested on a fast and you have too much sugar, here's what's happening. You have billions of cells in your body, billions of cells. You have too much blood in your sugar. What happens is the blood gets, uh, the sugar gets, attaches itself to the cells in your liver, in your heart, in your skin, in your small intestines, wherever. You have all of these cells. With sugar attached to certain cells, it gets on there it can never get off. The process is that it gets on there and there's a chemical reaction that turns it, it turns it into something called Sobitor, S-O-B-I-T-A-L, that destroys that cell. And you know your cells reproduce constantly. You don't have the same skin that you had say five months ago or whatever, it reproduces constantly. And guess what? It can never reproduce as a healthy cell again. It reproduces as a weaker and weaker and weaker cell. That's why diabetes, uh, uh, people with diabetes often end up losing limbs because too much Sarmator has gotten on a cell the cells in their feet or in their legs, and it can never get off, and it just destroys limbs, begins with the limbs. So when you eat too much sugar, that's what happens. That's what's going on in your body. You may not feel it yet, 
You may still feel, oh, this orange juice is so great that we want to eat the orange. And the difference is orange has fiber. Orange juice doesn't. Apple has fiber. Apple juice doesn't. So any kind of juices from fruits, they don't want you to eat any longer. They want you to eat the fruit because of the fiber. It slows the digester down. If you have fiber that your digestive system has to deal with, so you don't get that spike in the blood sugar, and then the drop. So we actually got to go. No. Have to go. <laughs> yeah, sorry. she was just saying. And I just want to say real quickly that Betty doesn't take any medications no. for anything. Like I think no. people assume that if you're a certain age, you you have to have medications, and because a lot of people your age do. She's yes. never had to take medication for anything and never no. had any. I have yeah. not had a headache or a stomach ache or a cold or the flu or anything in I know 35 years. Wow. And I don't do a flu shot. And yeah, when I was consulting out there, I did a lot of work in Alaska and on Indian reservations. And in Alaska, I wasn't at the city of Anchorage or Fairbanks. I was way out three hours by a four-seater plane to the villages where I stayed with the people, with the families. Rapid TB. My immune system is so strong and healthy that it fights off everything. And I, as a consultant, I was in and out of child development programs throughout the United States with snotty little-nosed <laughs> children sneezing and coughing all over the place. Never. Never. My immune system is so strong. And here it is. It's right here. You have it. Some people in their hands and some people in front of them. And here's what I would love to see. And you don't have to share this. But I would love to see everybody in here take one piece of information, one, and do it. Make it a part of your life. Just one little thing. Whatever you decide, make one little thing a part of your life. Take this little tiny, eensy weensy little baby step a part of your life. Yeah. Um, going back to. Um we have to like, we have to leave the room, right? Okay. I'm sorry. I think yeah, she's got to clean up. Yeah, it's brown rice and USDA. As I said, you'll put a little USDA certified logo. Have you seen that on some of the? Look for that. And then you'll have a better chance of not getting the bed yeah. from the price in China. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I noticed that they have that a lot in like a lot of the Well, it's a lot of bed in everything that comes from China. Yeah, that's true. 